Hello and welcome to Betfred's Football Show. 13 World Cup qualifiers tonight with England, Scotland and Northern Ireland all in action. But we're going to start domestically and uh, Ian Dow is in the studio alongside Fred. Uh, Fred, I'm going to start with you. Got to look back at the FA Cup of the weekend. Was that an opportunity missed for Manchester United? Yeah, I think it probably was. Um, you know, I've had this theory for a, a few years now that the, the, the cup competitions in this country are not what they used to be. Like the, uh, the, 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 I still call it the League Cup, but the League Cup and the FA Cup, a lot of the shine, a lot of the glamour has gone off it. And I, I blame it on the... Uh, the, the, the superior teams in the uh, in the Premiership, like United and Chelsea and Liverpool, you know they they've got their eye on the Premiership, they've got their eye on the European trophies, and I think it's it's taken a lot of the glamour away from it, and the, a lot of the excitement in it. But I'm still disappointed that we didn't go through. And you know one of the things that proves it to me, he brought four substitutes <laughs> on at the same time. I don't think I've ever seen that. From a, from a well, Premiership team, I've never seen it. I know what Fred's saying, but look at the semi finals. We've got Man City and Chelsea are in there. Well, playing each other as well. Yeah, of course, which is, I better be both gutted about that. Um, I mean, my view is just going back on the Man United thing, I think it's a mistake, a big mistake, is selection. I'm being honest, and I'm not, I'm not, I've never been critical of, of Oli because I think he's, his recruitment's been good. But listen, their back three. Davis, uh, sorry, Evans, Sainchu and Fafana is a quantum leap million times, a million times better than United will ever be defend. I'm telling you, I, and Harry Maguire plays for England, Fafana will go on to be a, a much better player than, than any of them because he's, he's, he's 20 years old, whatever he is. He, and, and I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, they're missing a load of players by their list. They've got injuries for fun. So no Madison, no Vardy. And it, it, I thought, it was, I, I, I've... Never seen a, a poor display. I thought it was. I, I thought it was. It was unlike a semi-final. I, and I, I fully buy what Fred says. He's, he's right. You could come up there. Let's, let's FA Cup semi. Ability to get to go FA Cup semi-final, and it's played without any intensity. Let's try a bit of intensity and won at a canter. By the way, they weren't at their best. They won at a canter. So it's a massive loss. And who knows? how this is going to go. I mean, I, I suggest United probably will finish in the top four. If they don't, and, and by the way, it's not that all cut and dried because Spurs maybe pick up the result and all of a sudden they're only three points behind Chelsea. So forget Man City, they're long gone, as, as, as Fred's yeah. played out on it. I, I, just, I just think that's a big mistake because putting a trophy in your cabinet, I know he's, he's you know, it's just, it's another tick that keeps him, you know, no, I'm not suggesting you get rid of Ellie Oni going to Solskjaer, but I'm saying, I think it's a big, I think it was a tactical error to do it this time, particularly was he, when he wasn't going great. Well, what would you rather win, the FA Cup or the Europa League? I think I'd win the FA Cup and put it in front of the Europa League. But again, and I think most Man United fans would feel yeah, like that, wouldn't they? I mean, I think the, the Europa, League, Europa League is much... Uh, second class event isn't it you know uh, I'd put the FA Cup in front of it by a million miles yeah. so why didn't he start with Fernandez and don't people like that well I, I, think, I think I think the Europa League could get you in the Champions League yeah. if but, you win it look, but I, I know what you're saying Manchester United but, are going to finish it's going to be poor now if <coughs> Manchester United don't finish in the top four I agree no I agree I agree with the 100% but so why, I just why think, didn't Ole go for it it's a trouble I don't know I don't, I don't understand and look, look if you're a Leicester fan right now, you're probably shouting at us, thinking, well, hang on, we deserve to win that, and they did. With 1,000%. But why didn't Manchester United go into that game with Leicester with a stronger team? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't answer that, to be honest with you. I do think that this summer is going to need a... I mean, listen, there's not... There's a big chasm between who's leading at the top of the table and the rest this year. Now, bring... Virgil van Dijk in the team that changes it gets, Liverpool get closer and they can't be as poor as next year's will be but them two are way in clear of everyone else by some distance and United needs this is Man United this, they have to be up there you know it's, they, need, they need recruitment at a better level and, and you know, they've got some, Fernandes is an amazing player you know I love Greenwood I love Rashford but I also want more consistency from them 
I mean, that, that's my well, frustration. Fair point. Sunday felt, again, a bit like three steps forward, two steps back with Manchester United, didn't it? Yeah, I do, I do think that. I mean, I, I don't want to get rid of Oli, and I think uh, uh, he was saying that his recruitment has been very good. Yeah, has it? Uh, you know, there's not much I would complain about that. But I do think that we need some class players in there. We need somebody who can score goals for us because I don't think Martial is the answer to anything. I think he's a good player on his day. But you need a new number I don't, nine. I don't think he has enough good days. And we need, we need a Harry Kane or Haaland. We need that sort of a class. They've got to go and break the bank on it. Pay that sort of money. We need somebody. But at the back, I'm not yeah. happy with what we've got at the back. No, I like agree. Lindelof, it looks like an accident waiting to happen every time. Well, you'd rather have Johnny Evans, wouldn't you? Oh, I agree. Yeah. Well, listen, I never I, liked Johnny Evans. They, why didn't but, they get him well, when West Brom went down? But, Yes, I do, I do. and listen. You wouldn't want, you know, people have had their critics of, of the full of the right back, but it, he's defensively as good as there is in the, in the league. Mm. So, all right, what you do is, and he tried to do that with Tellez, I think, but t- Tellez and Shaw, or, you know, or, 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 I don't, I don't think they're a level of uh, David Alaba. So why not go and buy David Alaba? Mm. You know what I mean? What me of that that level, a young David Alaba? But what my view is, I, I, I just think that. That's, I agree with Fred. It's absolutely fundamental. You buy br- a nailed-on number nine who's going to get you 35 goals. They've always had them, haven't they? Yeah. 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 Uh, so Man City are 4-5 to five to win the FA Cup. Leicester 3-1. to one. Chelsea 4-1. to one. Southampton 10-1. to one. It's Chelsea versus Man City. Leicester versus Southampton. So, is this going to be another trophy for Man City? I can't believe. Have you seen what price we are to win all four? I believe they're about six to one to yes. win all four. Get out. But, but you know, yeah. I would say to you, Ian, mathematic. If you think of it, winning all four obviously never been done. No. Unbelievable. But but you, achievement. But, but, Mathematically, it's right though. The, the Premiership is finished, isn't yeah. it? That's over. Yes, That's I over. agree. You know, you said yeah. you just said four to five to win the uh, the FA Cup. Yeah. What are they to win the European Cup? Two, two to, to one, one. Two to one. And what was the other? That's trophy? short. League Cup. That's so short. They, they've, they've got to be odds on against. I mean, me, me and Gav were talking earlier about. Yeah. I mean, short. Given that they're what they three to five or three point four to one to one or something, seven to two or something. Bayern. Yeah. I mean, it, I've got to say, I, I, I can see, I can see them winning three even in a half. I think I see, I think they beat Spurs. I think they win the FA Cup, and I think Chelsea's a dip. That's the tough tie for them because Chelsea would be awkward and difficult and could catch them on the counter-attack yeah. and they are vulnerable to that. Yeah. That's the way you play against City. You can't dominate the ball. But I just think Jesus has started it. His straps a little bit. De Bruyne is. So uh, they could win them. But the, you, you know, the Champions League's... <laughs> is, that's still... Uh, Liverpool could still surprise us in the Champions League. I agree. But, yeah, and, and, and they talk about play, a few players being back, I understand. So. I, I don't see Liverpool doing anything. At all this season. <laughs> At all. No, well, I, I think but, Fred's I th- probably right. I, I, think, I, think, I think you're right about the top four, and I thought you were completely wrong when you came out with that in early January. Uh, about Liverpool not being in the top four? Yeah, you just said that deliberately to wind them up. I still believe that they're not going to be in the top four. Well, I was looking at the... the 94 10. odds against it. You know, you put Chelsea out of it a month ago, two months ago. They bring the new manager yeah. in. They've not, they've not lost the game. No, they haven't. They're now, what, what they are, 51 points. They've... They're two points in front of West Ham. I would have loved to have seen West Ham get into uh, into, but let's just, into Europe. Let's just wrap up the FA Cup chat then. Okay. So yeah. obviously right. Man City are favourites at four to five. Yeah. You've got to fancy them. Man City to win the FA Cup again. I think this is a, I think it's a really tough game, the semi, for them. I think it's the worst possible draw. I think they're very, very dangerous. You know, if I'm playing if I've got Werner in my team against them and they're pushing forward as far as they can, but Werner gets beyond you. He ain't catching him. Mm. So, do I think that Chelsea can stop Man City scoring? No. So, yeah, I probably, if I'm honest, I think Man City just. But it wouldn't surprise me went the other way. But I'll say Man City just. I agree. Is that genius well, bet? Sat yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Southampton works well. 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 I was there at that yeah. game. We got beat 1 0, oh, didn't no. we? Yeah. But you know, still complain uh, about C- it. C- C- City have got to be favourite, but yeah. Chelsea has no pushover now. No. Every chance. Yeah, every chance. No. Well, we, you touched on the top four, so let's talk about the top four now. Look, I think obviously City, home and Hose, you've played yeah. out, but obviously definitely going to finish in the top four. Um, Man United are in second place. I mean, at times, I think Man United have been second place by default, aren't they? 
Is that top By four? the way, just, just, just on that second place, I'm telling you, you, we always override the job that Brendan Rodgers has done. I'm not being funny. He's not, I mean, they're looking quite clear now. If they win two more games here, all of a sudden they get, they're getting... Who can catch Leicester? If you're saying, sure. Is the top four going to change? No. I, I just have a funny feeling about Tottenham. I don't know why that is. I'd love to say West Ham. Oh, but it's a big result. Of the it's week, a big Jeff, result, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I've league. got... I've, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> Eric Dyer's in the England squad, isn't it? But, um, you know, with, with the form he's had of late. But I, I just think... Oh, I, listen, I love West Ham because it's my team, but I, I, I'm not going to be foolish enough. I think Tottenham's the only one that could disturb that. Other than that, yeah, I think it's where it is. Uh, next weekend, Leicester, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool. So, no, to finish in the top four, Man United now 1-20. to 20. Uh, Leicester and Chelsea 1-3. to three. Liverpool now 9-4. to four. Uh, Spurs 100 to 30, West Ham 5 to 1 to finish in the top four. It's so, bonkers, isn't it? A is simple that, is yes, that, a simple yes. Is that no? not bonkers though that, that Leicester are 1 to 3 and 1 to 20 Man, Man U? Well, yeah, because Leicester are only uh, one, one point four. behind. It sounds bizarre. Anyway, go on. Well, in. The question, ask me. That's, answer me that question. And ask the question. I'll answer I, it. I think that's factor in probably. The collapse last year, yeah. And, well, and probably legacy as well. Legacy is still factored into it. Yeah, place. I agree, but they've got Madison and Vardy coming back. Yeah. Right, so do, does the top four change, yes or no? It's a yes or no question. No. Here. Right, no. <laughs> no, it'll stay as it is. But, but you know, you mentioned West Ham. I would have loved to have seen West Ham in yeah. Europe because they've not been there for years. And I've been to West Ham. I love the West Ham supporters when I've been down there. Chelsea have been in it many times, yep. and and the Chelsea have got a big uh, bankroll there to to do it. West Ham have never had that. I think uh, it, they've surprised me this year the way they've played, but you know I don't think it's going to change. I think it's going to be City, United, Leicester, Chelsea. And very quickly at the bottom, West Brom, Sheffield United gone. Is it just between Newcastle and Fulham for that final spot? Or I think, I, do others get dragged I in? I think others get dragged in a little bit. But Newcastle, I mean, the injury to Callum Wilson at the time couldn't be any better. You know, to be, if, if Maximum and Wilson come back, of, you know, that's a game changer for, for Newcastle. But imagine the size of that club. I'm not being funny. That is beyond belief. I mean, f- compare Fulham to Newcastle. I'm not. That's been dis- not disrespectfully the job Scott Parker's done because he kept him in there. I think. I just think. Well, it's definitely. Uh, I worry for Newcastle. I've got to say, I really worry for them. And if they don't get Wilson and St. Maximum back quick, they're in big trouble. That's the uh, Premier League. But let's turn our attention to these World Cup qualifiers. England are in action tonight at Wembley. They play San Marino. Let's say from the England boss, Gareth Southgate. Well, look, any team can score at any time in a game. You can have um, random incidents like happened that night. I remember watching that game as a, as a youngster. So um, we've got to focus on you know, the majority of the game. We're going to have the ball. We want a positive performance where... Our players enjoy having the ball, but that we're ruthless with it and that we um, have the movement and the creativity to go and create chances and to, to score goals. So you can look at it in any different way. You can go into the game apprehensive because of what might go wrong, but we've got to be positive and say it's a game you should enjoy. You, you, you don't get... Um, too many games where at Wembley you can go out, you know you're going to have a lot of the ball and you've got to make sure that you use it well. Yeah, it's uh, tonight at Wembley, obviously. It's the, the fancy scores that everyone's backing, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. The game you mentioned then was 1993 <laughs> when San Marino scored after eight seconds. I'd forgotten all about it, to be quite honest, <laughs> until uh, I in, uh, saw the interview there and then I asked you which game he was referring to. But, you know, if this was a boxing match, it couldn't happen tonight, could it? You know, the, uh, the, somebody would have to step in after about four seconds. San Marino, I can't get excited about it. It's, uh, if you, if, if, I was going to say United, if England wanted to put the foot down, it should be 10-0 against these, uh, or, or more. It's 5-1, to 10-0. Is it? Right, OK, well. Uh, I, think, I, I, think it's something, I think Fred's on something. I mean, listen, I'm not a great fan of, of trying to 
small club, small nations are not being funny. I play for Northern Ireland, not a huge nation, but much. But I do think there is something to be done about some of these. I mean, this one's a mismatch of all mismatches. Um, so should can, be in the World Cup. Should be in the World Cup. Can they get? Oh, no, I think they need to do qualifying for qualifying. That's what I think. Um, so can can anyone get excited about this? No. Uh, will will we play a side that's comparable with what it will play against the better nations? No, it won't be. But I mean, it's got the group. Bulgaria and Poland will be the threats, and really, I've got to say, probably in where they are, Poland will be bottom Premier League, Poland's Bulgaria will be top Poland's championship. Way. It's yeah. Albania, Poland, Hungary and Andorra, isn't it? So, I mean, Andorra as well. So, look, it's a very, very yeah. easy group for England. Poland will play on Wednesday, Albania on Sunday. They played uh, San Marino in Euro 2016 qualifiers. Uh, they won 5-0 and 6-0. So, look, if we're going to get slightly excited, we want to see a few changes, don't we? So, right, who starts in goal then? Obviously, no Jordan Pickford. Uh, is it Nick Pope or got, Henderson? I think he might go with Henderson tonight. I think if it was a Poland, he'd go with Pope because I think he'd maybe trust his shot stop a little more. But, you know, Henderson's done nothing wrong. I've got to say, they don't... And Fred might disagree with you. Neither or all three of them don't smack me in the face as being top, top draw keepers. Agreed. Is my view. Agreed. But, you know, that's, I was re looking at the squad today. I've got to say, mm. his squad's very young. You think about that midfield area. I mean, fair to, to, to Gareth, he's, 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 he's blooding lots of youngsters in there. I, I'm, you know, I'm a great fan of Curtis Jones at Liverpool. I think he's got, you know, he's, he's in the under 21s, I understand, today. But, but my view is, I thought he might have got a shout. Bellingham, could he get a run today? He's been outstanding for, for Dortmund. Well, I think we'd all like to see Bellingham. I, you know, I want to see um, Phil Foden tonight. Well, I think you might probably will see Phil Foden tonight. I mean, great talent, amazing, quicker than he ever looks when he's normally running, great with the ball, deft, got an eye for a goal. Who doesn't like him? He's one of them players. As long as you can protect him physically, you know, in a team, I think he's, he's going to be outstanding. And, I, you know, he's been through difficult moments with England. I think he's become a top, absolute top draw midfield player. And who plays up front, Fred? I mean, I know Harry Kane will want to play <laughs> because he wants to score goals and chase down Wayne Rooney's record. Wayne Rooney scored four goals against San Marino and that was 53 England goals. But I, I get the feeling Kane won't. I think we'll probably see Ollie Watkins from Aston Villa. I'd like to see him as well. Well, if I was the manager, there's no way Kane would be playing tonight. I'd give somebody else a chance, give some new blood there. You know, you mentioned Phil Foden there. I do think he's a great prospect. And I was, I was looking at the, uh, a prospective team for the Euros. When yeah. we get, um, are we going to speak about the Euros? Yeah, later? yeah. Well, I'll leave, I'll leave it, but I do think we've got every chance there. But no, I'd play Youngins tonight. I mean, if we can't, if we can't win six or seven nil tonight, even with Youngins on, it's a bad well, show. Well, I think we all want to see a change team because it'll make us a bit more entertaining yeah. for us. There's going to be no Rashford, by the way. He's definitely injured. So I'd like to see Ollie Watkins. And Saka? Uh, I think he's a possible injury down yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, so no, he's a set of got a knock. Sack the lad who's yeah. some so, player, by the yeah, way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to look at um, Calvin Phillips and Leeds. Does he get a look in? Yeah, as I think well? he'll play. Um, and then I tell you, someone definitely back in the England fold has been superb. In fact, there's two. No, in fact, there's three we can talk yeah. about. John Stones, first of all. Yeah, I've got. Yeah, he surprised me. Because if I'm honest, I think it's in there still somewhere. What a mistake. Yeah. I mean, but, but I've got to say, he's been outstanding this year, although there has been a tendency for the boy uh, to, to play with Laporte of late, you know. I mean, the other lads... Diaz. Diaz, he's, he's, he's got... He can run like the wind, he's unbelievable on the ball, he's, he, he brings other players, you know. I've got to say, you know what I mean? Also, Carl Walker's been absolutely magnificent this year, defensively. He's back in the squad. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, I think Stones might play tonight, alongside... Harry Maguire, or maybe Mings, or maybe maybe it's Mings and Maguire, or Mings and Stones. You might go that way. And two Manchester United players, one who's on loan, who's both back in the Tall. squad, Luke Shaw and Jesse Lingard. Luke now, Shaw, yeah. Luke, you need to apologise to Luke Shaw. I, I do. I was very critical of Luke Shaw. I think since we've had him at Old Trafford, with the exception of this season, I've not been happy with him. <laughs> one, he's, he, he's injured all the time and he's escaped well, he injury this year. Well, him, I know that, but even, even so, every little niggle that he's, he's one of those players that seems to be injured all the time. Well, I, 
He's a revelation this year, I would say. He has done well this year. Got, I'm with Fred, I've got to say. I, I, he, he, listen, if, if, it, if I was picking... I don't know, he, he could play a three tonight or whatever way he goes about it. If he's playing a fullback, he wouldn't be it. And, and listen, he has done magnificent this year, I agree. But it, it, he I can would, play you tonight, but of course you're not yeah, narrowing. <laughs> no. Well, listen, I'm not, even, I'm not sure. That it would be, I, I think he would even outrun me, the, uh, the San, <laughs> San Marino right, right winger. But anyway, my view is... I think it's a good, it's a great Luke Shaw. It's a probably good game to stick him in and let him have a, a run out because you know, he's, as Fred said, he's had a terrible time, but he's coming back into some fine form. I still have this thing about him. He's, he's much better <coughs> going forward than he is defensively. Agree. Yeah. Let's have a look at betting for uh, Euro 2020. The final is going to be at Wembley in July as well. So we've got joint favourites at the moment: England and France are cool favourites with Belgium as well. Belgium beat Wales last night. Germany 15 to 2, the Dutch who lost last night 8 to 1, Spain 8 to 1, Portugal who just scraped through last night 9 to 1, Italy they're playing Northern Ireland, we'll talk about them in a moment as well. So that is the betting for the Euro 2020. Uh, England, I've got Croatia, Scotland, and the Czech Republic, which is a very, very good draw. However, I think what's been missed that they are looking at a quarter final, probably against either Portugal, France or Germany. Yeah, I agree. I mean... I, so I everyone know, said it's a great draw. I, it is a good draw, but, but I listen, the Czech Republic of just showing, you know, we, two, we got, we've got two of them playing in Northern Ireland's team. You know, uh, sorry, in, 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 in West Ham's team, rather. Uh, that's not an easy joke. Croatia, I mean, they got beat last night, but... It, it, is, it is a good draw, and England will, will definitely get there. Um, will they beat Germany or... Uh, I think they will, as we stand now. Mm. So, yeah, listen, so the, I've, I've got to say that there is a little part of that squad I'm thinking that needs experience, you know. I, I still, I'm thinking Mason Mount's the only out-and-out out creator, isn't he, in that midfield, do you not think? Well, could Phil Foden be that, man? Yeah, well, that's what I'm, yeah, probably that's a fair comment. So, yeah, him and, so Foden and him, but you, you, you'll have to play a Calvin Phillips with him, wouldn't you? In, out of that team they're play, picking now, or be much more defensive, otherwise you'd be open. It'd be an oh. open team. Will John Henson be back by then? Well, we'd hope so. What I'm saying is, don't forget, the last winners of the Euros and the last winners of the World Cup have had the best defence. That, that's, that's fact. So it's not, it's not, yes, we're all talking about free-flowing football, and it certainly will be. France will be. But generally, they had that much of the ball, you can't get them. Portugal were the best team before that. So, you know, in the end, that, 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 there's where we are. So, so look, England are joint favourites. Can they do it? I mean, obviously, playing at Wembley is a massive advantage. Yes. There will be, I don't think Wembley will be full, but there will be some kind of crowd. Okay. Can, can, it could be 30,000, I think. Can England win it? Yes, because Harry Kane's probably the best all round centre forward in world football as we speak now. So, yeah, we, and, and I just wonder, I, I've got to say, I worry about the back four of England. That's or, or back three, what happens to be. So I'm a little bit concerned. I, if you, if I, I watch Villa a bit, and Ezri Konza, who plays for Villa, I think he's their best centre half, not Mings. And that's not a criticism of Mings, done well, but Konza looks like a player to me. I like Cody. Cody's not far behind Maguire, I don't think. In, England, yeah. in my opinion, England have got every chance. And the home advantage at Wembley is a big advantage, in my opinion. And you look at uh, some of the players that they've got there, you could pick four out of the City squad. You've got Sterling, you've got Foden, yeah, yeah, so you've agree. got Kyle Walker, you've got John Stones, you've got Rashford, <laughs> you've got Greenwood, you've got Shaw. Greenwood's not in the squad and, this time. And, but... and somebody else I like is this Jaden San Sancho from Dortmund. He's, he's a very promising. So uh, on paper, we've got a, we've got a decent yeah. team there. So they can win it. But isn't this what we say all the time? England have yeah. got a good Listen, what, what, what Gareth needs to do, and he didn't need to he tell me to do Harry's job, but what he needs to do is, is now hone his, talk, hone his abilities to a team that's a winning machine, that finds a way to win. <clears throat> Not just entertain, because that's prerequisite now. It's got to be find a way to win. So even when they don't play well, and they will have one game, two games, they don't play well, they find a way to win. Yeah. The best do that, don't they? So, and Gareth... And what, 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 why I'm saying about, and it's not being negative, it's just, uh, as we speak now, I don't, I don't think he's blessed with 
outstanding defenders. So give, all right, I know it's San Marino, so give some others a go tonight, like yeah, Colby, etc. No, I agree. And, and listen, I think, I, think, I, I, I think it's, well, listen, it's a great redemption for Stones if he plays tonight or whatever. and plays, He might play all three games, who knows? So we've got to see if he's back at that level. He's certainly good enough on the ball. Um, Mings will probably play whatever happens to be. We'll be interested to see what back four he plays. So all I'm saying is against the best, against the best, and then we'll have to play against the best. Can, you know, what my view is, you know, I think about looking at Italy. Italy haven't lost since 2018, and yet, yeah. and yet they're 12 well, to 1. Not lost in 22 matches. Roberto Mancini, yeah. uh, now the boss, and they're playing Northern Ireland tonight. Yeah, I know. Uh, now, first of all, how tough to take was that extra time loss to Slovakia that you won't be at the Euros? Yeah, I, uh, do you know what? Do you know what was t- tough to take? Because Carl, Carl, Carl Lafferty lost his sister, tragically, just before the game. And he, the shot that hit the post from Carl Lafferty, it comes to him, he chests it after we were on all and we're on top last sort of thing. And he, he takes a great touch. If he just reverses it to Boyce, he's in through on goal and he taps it in for a... And he's, and he's a great finisher, Boyce, one-on-one. He takes a shot, hits the post, it goes wide. And they are then, you know, they, they end up nicking a goal. It's, it's difficult to take, but, you know, look on the run. We've been in a poor run. Um, you know, yeah, I think not it's... Not one in ten. Ten, I agree. Ten, and, you know, I think it's what's four, six, six uh, defeats and four draws. Uh, give a word to your captain tonight, Stephen Davis. Incredible. He'll, he'll match Peter Shilton's record yeah. of 125 yeah, caps. Amazing. And Absol- obviously he's had a brilliant a- a- season at Rangers. He's had a great season at Rangers, still plodding on. And do you know what the difference is? You know who got us to the Euros? Stephen Davis got his Euros. And his goals, chipping in and doing what he did... Listen, no one expects him to be at a level, and he hasn't been at that level anymore. And that's not a criticism, just because he's eight. He's an amazing role model, great to be around the place, and we've got to try and find a replacement to it for him. Thompson looks the most likely, who, who's got great delivery, but as yet hasn't found that dynamism in the team. So how will you get on tonight, then? Well, I mean, if we, if we go there... or well, listen, I think there's 55 games they lost at home in Italy. They never lose at home. Um, I'm hoping we get a draw, but I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I think you'll have to get on your prayer mat to get... No, no, listen, my view is I think Italy win and win comfortably. And what about Scotland-Austria? Austria Austria also qualified for the Euros and we know Scotland are there in the same group as England. So they'll play the Czech Republic, Croatia and England. And Che Adams we're going to see tonight. Yeah, interesting. You know, along with Lyndon Dykes, whoever that to be, and Fraser. You know, you think about what the job he's done, Steve Clark. I think he's got... They're they're much more disciplined, much more organised. He plays to their strengths... I think he's done an amazing job. I think it's a difficult game tonight. If you think about you know, Franco Foda's side with Christoph Bartling and the boy from Hoffenheim who's ripping it up, Sabitza, David Alaba, well, They're qualified top of their group as well. Yeah, they? yeah. I mean, listen, they're, 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 I, I'm just, I think Scotland, I think, I think Scotland are going great guns. I think they've got great confidence about them. They've won nine of the last 13 yeah, competitive home which matches. Which is quite incredible. And I think... I think, I think that, Steve Clark's brought some confidence back, hasn't I he? think he has. And, you know, they're all talking about him tonight today about the Celtic job. I think he definitely won't take that until he's done his, the Euros thing and, and no one would, would want him to. But, um, and if he wants to take that, I think it's a difficult game, but I fancy Scotland to get something tonight. I agree. You know, with, uh, I looked at the betting before we uh, started the show and Scotland is second favourite. I don't agree with it. I think they should be favourites tonight, and I think they'll win. Uh, gents, we're running out of time. I've enjoyed your, uh, yeah. uh, your company. Uh, look, I hope he plays a different team tonight, so it's a bit of interest while watching uh, San Marino. Uh, otherwise, I'll do what I normally do, watch Sopranos. <laughs> I'm still back on Series 4 again. Um, give us a scoreline for oh. England San Marino. For I us. think it'll be 6 plus. Six plus. That's not a scoreline. Come on. All right. Okay. Seven nil. Seven nil. <laughs> that is eleven to two. I presume you mean England. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I just think it's five nil. I, I just I think it's anything more than four. The game's lost interest. I mean, Fred's saying you can't get excited about it. Um, but it's a game they have to do professionally. I don't need. You know, they need to go. They get an early goal. The game's over. Yeah. Look, it, it's not great time. It was going in the Premier League and three matches. But look. Most importantly, in this horrible time we're having, we've, at least we've got football back, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. It's absolutely. kept me going, some of the football yeah. that oh, yeah. we've been it's watching. Oh, yeah, it's been amazing, yeah. some of it. And it is great, live yeah. football. Okay. Remember, if you're having a bet on the World Cup qualifiers, please uh, keep it fun and gamble responsibly. Uh, this is all we've got time for this week. We'll be back next Thursday as well, when we're building up again to the return of the Premier League. Be lucky.